picture this. A heavily armored helicopter gets slammed by a surface-to-air missile mid-flight. Engines screaming, cockpit shattered, but it doesn't crash. Instead, it limps back to base, saving its crew and ready for another fight. That's no Hollywood stunt. That's the real story of a Mi-28 Havoc in combat. What kind of engineering wizardry makes this Russian monster nearly indestructible? And could its secrets be the key to dominating the skies in future wars? Stay tuned, because in this video, we're diving deep into the Havoc's wild history, from Cold War origins to modern battlefields, revealing everything from its killer strengths to its fatal flaws. You won't believe what we uncover. If you're fascinated by military machines that defy death, smash that subscribe button right now and hit the bell icon. Join our community of aviation enthusiasts. We drop epic breakdowns like this every week. All right, let's rewind the clock. The Mil Me 28, NATO codename Havoc, isn't just another chopper. It's a purpose-built killing machine designed to rain destruction on tanks and troops. But how did this beast come to life? Our story starts in the tense days of the Cold War. Back in 1972, right after wrapping up the legendary Mi-24 Hind, a hybrid gunship that could carry troops and blast enemies, the Soviet Union realized they needed something meaner. The Mi-24 was versatile, but it had compromises. A bulky troop bay that slowed it down and made it less agile in pure attack roles. Enter the Mi-28 project. Soviet engineers at Mil Moscow helicopter plant, led by designer Marat Tishchenko, kicked off development in 1980. Their goal? Create a dedicated anti-armor helicopter optimized for speed, firepower, and survivability without the baggage of passenger transport. Why build it? Simple. The West was flexing with advanced tanks and helicopters like the American AH-64 Apache, which was in development around the same time. The Soviets wanted a counterpunch, a chopper that could hunt NATO armor in all weather, day or night, and support ground forces in brutal close air support missions. Imagine the paranoia of the era. Nuclear tensions high, proxy wars raging. The Mi-28 was born from that fear, engineered to tip the scales in a potential east-west clash. Fast forward to November 10, 1982. The first prototype, OP-1, takes to the skies in a hover test. It was a tandem seat design with a slender fuselage, stub wings for weapons, and a chin-mounted cannon that screamed business. But the road wasn't smooth. By 1984, initial trials wrapped up, yet the Soviet Air Force picked the rival Kamov Ka-50 instead, a single-seat oddball with coaxial rotors. Ouch! The Mi-28 program stalled, but a 1984 government decree kept it alive for export potential. Undeterred, Mill pushed on. In 1988, the upgraded Mi-28A prototype flew with more powerful engines and a quieter X-shaped tail rotor. It even strutted its stuff at the 1989 Paris Air Show, turning heads worldwide. But the 1991 Soviet collapse threw everything into chaos. Funding dried up, and by 1993, the program was canned until they realized the Call 50 lacked all weather chops. 
Enter the Game Changer, the Mi 28N Night Hunter variant, unveiled in 1995. This bad boy added a nose-mounted radar, thermal imaging, and laser targeting for 24-7 operations. The prototype flew in 1996, but money woes delayed it again. Finally, in 2004, a revamped version with better rotors took off. Serial production kicked in at Rostov-on-Don in 2005, and the first May 28N entered Russian service in 2006. Official adoption, October 15, 2009. By 2025, over 190 have been built, with upgrades like the Mi 28NM pushing speeds to 320 km per hour and adding stealthy features. Now let's talk battles, the Havoc's bloody resume. Its combat debut came late but fierce. In 2016, during the Syrian Civil War, my 28 ns supported Syrian forces in the Battle of Palmyra against ISIS. Picture this, Havocs unleashing nine M120, Ataka missiles, and S-8 rockets, turning ancient ruins into a modern inferno. They provided close air support, hunting terrorist convoys under cover of night. But Syria was just a warm-up. The real test, the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mi-28s were front and center, striking Ukrainian armor in brutal engagements like the Battle of Hostomel Airport. They've racked up kills, but at a cost over a dozen confirmed losses to man pads like the British Star Streak and even FPV drones, a first in aviation history when one damaged a Havoc mid-flight in Kursk Oblast in 2024. Crews have shared harrowing tales. One pilot survived a direct hit, crediting the armored cockpit. But vulnerabilities show. Ukrainian intel claims raids on Russian bases have crippled several. Before Ukraine, the Export Me 28NE saw action with a rake against ISIS starting in 2014. Iraqi pilots praised its firepower in urban fights around Mosul, where it decimated militant strongholds. Algeria got theirs in 2016, using them for border patrols, while Uganda deployed MI-28Ns in peacekeeping ops in the Democratic Republic of Congo, until one crashed in 2024 due to mechanical issues. What makes the Havoc a powerhouse? Let's break down its strengths. First, armor. The cockpit and vital systems shrug off 12.7mm bullets and 20mm fragments. Energy-absorbing seats and landing gear let crews survive 12 meters per second crashes, think dropping from a building and walking away. Firepower insane. A 30mm 2A42 cannon chews through tanks at 1,500 meters, plus up to 16 Ataka anti-tank missiles that punch through 800 millimeters of reactive armor. Add S-8 slash S-13 rockets for saturation strikes, and even air-to-air -air missiles like the R-73 for dogfights. The ME-28NM ups the ante with 25-kilometer range LMUR missiles and 360-degree radar, making it a flying sniper. Speed and agility shine too. 320 kilometers per hour, top speed. 
270 km per hour cruise with a 435 km range. Dual engines, Klimov VK 2500-2500 horsepower each ensure redundancy. If one fails, it keeps flying. Night Ops Helmet mounted displays and FLIR turn darkness into daylight. In exercises like Union Shield 2011, Havoc's outmaneuvered simulated foes, proving their edge in combined arms warfare. But no machine is perfect. Here come the weaknesses. Despite tough armor, modern threats exploit gaps. In Ukraine, cheap drones and advanced SAMS have downed several, exposing radar signature issues. Mechanical gremlins persist. A 2015 aerobatics crash killed a pilot due to hydraulic failure grounding the fleet. The MI-28 lacks the Apache's advanced data links for networked warfare, relying more on pilot skill. Export versions sometimes skimp on tech to cut costs, and maintenance is a beast in harsh climates. Plus, it's noise, those X-rotors help, but it's no stealth ghost. Today, the Havoc remains a cornerstone of Russian air power, with about 100 in service, replacing aging Mi-24s. Russia plans 98 Mi-28 NMs by 2027 for high-tech strikes. Iraq uses theirs for counterterrorism, Algeria for deterrence, and Uganda for regional stability. As drones rise, the havoc evolves. New helmets and missiles keep it relevant. But in an era of hypersonics and AI, can it adapt? There you have it, the MI-28 Havoc, a Cold War relic turned modern warrior full of triumphs and tragedies. What do you think? Could it take on an Apache one-on-one? -on -one? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If this deep dive hooked you, subscribe now for more military breakdowns. From jets to subs, like, share, and hit that bell. We've got epic content coming your way. Thanks for watching.